Well, good morning, everyone. You're very, very welcome. And it is nine. It's like a radio show. And it is 9.30. We're ready to go. <laughs> You're all very, very welcome to the Fingal Chamber networking event. And it's great to see so many people here on a beautiful morning because the temptation, especially over the last couple of days when we've had Arctic winds blowing down and bringing uh, the weather that it brought with it. As soon as the sun comes out, uh, not to dedicate the little hour this morning to the chamber. So delighted that you all have. And we're promising you. We're going to make it worthwhile. So my name is Noel Davidson. It's great to be back again. And we have a packed agenda for the little hour that we are together. We have our guest speaker. We have our network events. And we're going to be using the full power of Zoom. Most of you will have realized over the last couple of months that a lot of the features have upgraded and we'll be going to use them to their full capacity today. And on a test basis, we're going to see what works, what doesn't work and get your feedback on it. I have great pleasure to uh, to welcome Andrea Malloy, the president of Fingal Chamber, uh, to open this morning's event. Andrea, how are you? Good morning. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Noel. And thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning for our Fingal Chamber virtual networking event. As the large and region's largest business organization, Fingal Chamber helps businesses of all sizes to grow and develop by providing members with opportunities to influence policy, connect with businesses and professionals, train their workforce, promote their business and trade internationally. The Chamber is committed to provide, promoting local economic development and enhancing the economic prosperity and quality of life across the region, whilst ensuring local businesses have a competitive advantage. The primary services the Chamber offers to members include advocacy and lobbying support, where we liaise with government departments, engage with policymakers and the media, and directly represent on industry and community committees. The Chamber also coordinates upskilling and training programmes. This is provided through the Fingal Chamber Skillnet, where we operate and promote <coughs> subsidised training determined by business needs, customised and delivered locally. We're also very proactive with our networking and events programme, where, where we host regular government and key stakeholder briefings, a business networking series and a variety of social events. The Fingal Chamber website has an exclusive members information section. This allows members to network online, profile their business, share news updates, events, job vacancies <coughs> and any special offers with the business community. Over a year ago, like many, our operations were forced to change, but the Chamber quickly adapted to working with COVID-19. As the Chamber staff moved seamlessly to working virtually for most of our services, we reacted to the new reality by changing our focus to helping businesses survive. Looking ahead, we've lots happening over the coming months. If you're already a Chamber member, I would encourage you to check out our website and join in the upcoming activities. If you're not a Chamber member, you can find out more online on fingalchamber.ie or by contacting a member of our team to find out how membership can benefit your business specifically. I do hope you find today's event useful and on behalf of the Fingal Chamber and myself, I wish you and your business every success in the future. Thank you, and I'll hand you back to our presenter today, Noel Davidson. Oh, that's <laughs> it, Andrea. Thank you so much indeed. And uh, a quick reminder there. So the website is fingalchamber.ie, and it is a treasure trove of information. As and Andrea said, all the services are listed down here. Uh, the membership details are there and the benefits. Um, there's the member login at the top. But you can see there's events and news and the whole community is there. Please keep an eye on the website because today is really only a taster of something that goes on all year round. So uh, great to have everyone here. I um, can see some great um, friends and colleagues and, uh, and many people that uh, I've known over the last couple of months where we've met virtually on Zoom and the world really has changed. Um, and uh, we were only having a chat just there off camera about how things are going to be over the next couple couple of months and the hybrid style of events that will probably be both live and then online. So we want your input and your, your feedback on how today goes. So using Zoom, um, we have everyone muted at the moment, but it's just, it's really for everyone's safety that you don't accidentally unmute yourself and say something in a, in a live audience that you don't want to say. Um, but you can unmute yourself by raising your hand if you have any questions. So underneath your screen, you have the reactions section. If you click on that, there's a line of emojis. 
where you can say you love it or you put the thumbs up, whatever. They stay up for around 10 seconds. So they're like a reaction. But underneath that, it says raise hand. If you do that, your hand stays up and we can see you and we can unmute you at any stage. You can also use the comments. So we'll see, we'll keep an eye on the comments. And uh, we've got everyone there actually saying to Fiona Pepper saying, good morning, everyone. Neil Gallagher saying, morning all. Robin Webster's here saying, good morning. And Kevin McFeely is saying, looking very comfortable there, Shay. So Shay, you're lying back too far there with a hand up. That's there. We see you there. Absolutely. There's no hiding on Zoom. And he's got the coffee and everything this morning. That's what it's all about. So please embrace the technology, use the chat and raise your hand if you want to ask a question. And by God, will you want to ask a question? Because we are thrilled to have Gillian Clancy with us this morning. So Gillian is from Jenkinson Logistics and she took on a brand new role uh, as a sales role. And when would you do it? Yeah, February last year, just before COVID hit. And that would stop a normal person from a sales point of view. She had the car ready to zoom around and to get out and start generating sales. But she moved on to a different type of Zoom uh, and Microsoft Teams and the phone and everything, whatever it took, because it didn't stop her. And she has been an absolute re revelation um, on how she dealt with the challenges faced with logistics and getting the thing, whatever that is, to the person that wants the thing. Gillian, you're very, very welcome. Good morning. Good how morning. are you? Good I'm, morning. I'm very well. Thanks very much for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Everyone looks very bright and sharp and like it is, it is a lovely sunny morning. So hopefully everyone will stay awake while you're listening to me for the next couple of minutes. Well, listen, you're very, very welcome. And I think uh, let's kick back because the whole purpose of this morning is to inform, it's to inspire and yeah. to network. So let's get the information out of the way. Tell us a little bit about Jenkinson Logistics. It's a it's a family run company that's around for a long time, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's a, an independent Irish uh, owned family run company. It was, um, I suppose, established first in 1975 um, by Gareth Jenkinson, our CEO at the moment, his father, Neville. Um, Neville's passed at the moment now, but um, he opened, he started, I suppose, a, a linear agency in, in Dublin, basically, as um, a Dublin agent. That kind of grew and developed onwards then, in, in, to about 1999, um, they took over another Irish well-established company called J.P. Jones & Sons. They were a freight forwarding company. Um, and from there onwards, I suppose, Jenkinson Logistics was developed. So. From 1999 onwards, it's been Jenkinson Logistics. So we um, are a freight forwarding business, logistics business, and it kind of does, I suppose, what it says on the tin. We do air freight, road freight, and sea freight, um, import, export, warehousing, project shipments. Um, we have a kind of those warehouse storaging available, the whole lot really, everything you can kind of, kind of imagine for, for global supply chain. And so, your own background, um, where, yeah. where did you develop on that path to, to become... Um, in sales and in Jenkinson? It was a bit of a random one, to be honest. Um, I was actually working in a different uh, marketing company and that went into liquidation and um, Jenkinson's happened to be in the same building and they approached me basically to, to come on board to help de develop a new angle to their um, to their portfolio, I suppose. Um, Jenkinson's obviously is involved in shipping every kind of commodity. Um, and one of those commodities obviously is foodstuffs and perishables. At the time, um, we had uh, Emirates coming into from Dublin, departing from Dublin, and obviously Emirates offer then, I suppose, your kind of your top class perishable exports for 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 people that maybe wouldn't have had the the same opportunity with a different airline. So, um, we had been shipping to various uh, countries uh, for a lot of these importers regularly, and we had a guy approach us in Bahrain. Uh, he actually came on to us to see if we could help him build, I suppose, an Irish portfolio for export purposes into the Middle East. We would then build a portfolio or I would build a portfolio in Dublin from Jenkinson's um, and he would then sell the portfolio throughout the Middle East into retail outlets or, or food service import buyers say. Um, obviously Irish product being a very um, attractive uh, I suppose in terms of your green and your clean and you've got all the, the origin green and board B and stuff behind us so um, that really opened up new doors for us. So I had been building the portfolio in, in Jenkinson's as part of a trading name called Global Irish Food Traders. Eventually, we kind of turned it all back into the one to, I suppose, the, the freight forwarding business, the, the food, I suppose, portfolio, all became one, I suppose, in sync together. And uh, we kind of have been introducing import buyers to the Irish suppliers now for the last couple of years. 
we did actually sell on uh, some of the, the items ourselves. But like I said, we, we stuck to our guns and said, OK, well, we'll keep with the freight forwarding side of things. So if, it, if an import buyer wanted to come onto Jenkins to say, I'm looking to source pork or beef or whatever it might be, I'll then introduce them to, to an Irish supplier and we'll be the link in the chain in, in terms of getting everything in motion and helping support them in terms of paperwork and what they need and how they should pack it and all that kind of stuff. That's where I started in terms of, so I am I am sales and, and I suppose a bit of marketing, but a bit of everything in Jenkinson's. But um, that's where I came on board was the food stuff mainly. So I've kind of branched out in terms of other commodities and other industries then since then. And many people in the room will have challenges that they all face in the last in the last 12 months and uh, and beyond. And I love the way that you use uh, chain as a, an analogy there, because logistics, there is a lot of links to those chains. And if one of them yeah. fall down, it is uh, it because the problem. And I think in everyone's mind in the last week or two, we can remember a very large ship getting stuck between two banks in a very narrow canal. How did that kind of affect you? Because you mentioned foodstuffs earlier on. Was it there- is, yeah. Like you can imagine if you picture, obviously everyone has seen the picture of that canal and, and, and the, the ship that was stuck and the poor guy, or it was actually a woman um, <laughs> um, steering it basically. But it's there is a serious amount of commodities that would have been on that, that ship itself. They thousands upon thousands of containers some refrigerated, some non-refrigeration, but you would have had everything from pharmaceuticals, food stuff, furniture, machinery, everything you can kind of possibly imagine. A lot of it would have been transiting through that canal and um, going onwards. So it was a case of the, the blockage is in, in terms of delays for the containers or the ships in the background trying to get through that couldn't, they were held up. Their commodities were then held up. Customers were waiting for that stuff for probably a couple of weeks longer than they should have been. And a lot of the time, these things are temp, uh, time sensitive. So as in, you could have a container of beef, say that would be set to two degrees and it's a uh, shelf life of three months. And you can imagine yourself, if it's stuck for an extra month, you're not really gonna be selling that beef by the time it arrives to its destination. So um, in terms of the actual shipping costs, they they rose um, there was, it's there's always gonna be surcharges when things like this happen. And um, there's always gonna be delays onwards. There's a serious lack of actual equipment at the moment in terms of getting specific types of containers. And um, there's, uh, I, if anyone here is uh, would be involved in any kind of sea freight shipments, and um, they would know that reefers is in, in refrigerated containers at the moment. There is just a, a real lack of them there, and it has been a struggle for a long time now in terms of getting secure and those kind of bookings for customers. And when something like that happens, it makes a bad situation even worse. So it's. Again, it's just it surcharges, delays. But again, it's just stuff that would kind of happen and you, you do get through it. There's always alternative routes and um, different ways to kind of get around something. So that's probably something that we would try and do our best to, to kind of steer people in a, in a new direction. Yeah, and we're going to get on to te- technology, to some of the tools that help you. But I love the fact that um, uh, we mentioned about the Suez Canal. And would you believe, um, just for a little bit of fun, there actually is a website that CNN brought out because so many people were saying, how did they crash the ship? Well, actually, there's an online simulator when you can actually steer the ship yourself, right? And see just how difficult it is when the wind starts to blow. Um, and it's, a, it's extraordinary the amount of tech that's out there that we take for granted because logistics is something that we don't see we see the end result you know we go into our local multiples and we see the the food on the on the trays ready to go um or from the the perspective of the people here in the room they may have a product or a service and they're trying to get it into the hands of their clients or their customers so f- your role in sales and from a sales point of view you can have the most amazing business on the planet but if you've no if you've if you know marketing, no sales, you've no business. How did you pivot? How did you change from if you remember last February where you would yeah. be face to face and to using some of the tech to start continuing the sales process and generating business? Well, I suppose it's 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 really obviously we're kind of really lucky enough to, to have such like a, a wide varieties of internet based kind of conversations. Like I said, you've got your Zoom, you've got your Microsoft Teams. And everything else that goes with it, obviously those being the two probably most used. Um, I suppose we had our, our teams and stuff like that, Microsoft Teams set up um, in Jenkinson's before we had kind of, I suppose, departed to our home offices. So that was easy enough for us to interact with our own, uh, our own, I suppose, team members or, or staff. So um, 
that was probably a big link in it is to make sure that if I'm operating a sales uh, conversation with someone that I can then pass it over to an operations point of view and know that's going to be in sync as well. There's not going to be any delays or um, everyone's kind of under the same umbrella. So the um, in terms of actual reaching customers, it was pretty a basic stuff, to be honest. It would be your your calls, your your online, your source and your LinkedIn, your, um, like I said, even social media. It was probably as well really easy to identify in terms of industries who was going to be needing some 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 SOS and some, who would be struggling at the moment to get product to where it needs to be or as, as, in terms of commodities like you've got your obviously there was a lot of pharmaceuticals and um, so it was a case of re really reaching out to these people but we're probably lucky enough as well to have a lot of recommendations and last year probably was um uh, I suppose a big year in terms of customers who maybe had been using it as a, a, a chain that had been working for them that all of a sudden it, it kind of crashed down on them when COVID came and they weren't too sure. And we had a lot of our own customers to recommend us to these guys because I suppose what we would do naturally is to kind of tailor um, a supply chain to a customer's demands or, or their customer's demands. So I suppose we kind of go from it from A to B, from very start, from your depot to the final destination. So um, like, like that, it was literally a case of there was a lot of recommendations there was a lot of calls being made. There was a lot of reaching out on emails. There was a lot of Teams calls, Microsoft Office, the whole lot. Yeah, and embracing the technology. So a, a quick yeah. shout out to everyone in the room. If you ever want to know anything about logistics, Gillian Clancy is here. So don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Raise your hand or put a question into the chat and I'll put it to Gillian. Um, there's many areas um, from logistics point of view. So there's C, there's rail, there's storage, there's warehousing, there's um, the paperwork. Yeah. How has has the business changed and to such extent that won't go back? You know, have you have you made changes that you have identified now that we're going to keep them? You know, we're going to we're not going to keep traveling everywhere. We might use Zoom or Teams, as you said. But where's the biggest changes that you can see, Gillian? Well, I don't think I've printed off half as many pages this year than I would have the year before. I I I I very rarely use my pen and paper more than I would have been. No, that's not true. I still use my pen and paper. Um, but in terms of like, yeah, like I said, everything can be based on an online platform. Like I said, we have our own online platform, I think, but uh, it's just it, it, using the tools that you would have maybe than uh, kind of relying on the likes of that. Like everyone would have their own their own folders and their own um I suppose go to paperwork but like I said it is all based online on our platform that we would use now and um, in terms of what we wouldn't use maybe going forward again like I said there's it's it's more so I think realizing the flexibility that is that is already there that we don't really need to kind of go searching for again like I said I can speak to my colleagues as just as fast as I would in the office like I said they're all there they're all accessible to me as well so um in terms of what we wouldn't really use there's not I suppose it's we, I suppose we weren't really overusing anything in the past that we can kind of cut out. But um, like I said, it's just to say that there is the flexibility is there that if I need to reach a customer, I can still reach them on a screen instead of maybe pulling up outside their depot. Well, I suppose we we do hope to make a few more um, in-person calls as well as, as time goes on, just as catch ups, you know, so to blend them back and then. Gillian Clancy, the person, I mean, life has changed. You're, you're in Swords and you're not too far away from me here. You said generally yeah. from Galleons and the business is in Clockran. Um, but lunch hour, you were saying you, you get out for a walk <laughs> and now you can actually get out for a run because the, the whole work day has changed dramatically, hasn't it? It has, but it's just the flexibility. I think I love um, like it's there's. Obviously, when you're sitting in traffic in the morning and if it's maybe it's a bit of a darker morning and someone in front of you is taking their time at the traffic lights and all that kind of thing, all those bits and pieces, they add on to your day and to your morning and you might be carrying that a bit with you then throughout the rest of the day. But for me, I love the fact that like I can have a stretch outside in the morning if I want before work, I can, you know what I mean? I'm taking my time with my coffee more so than maybe rushing it into the car with me like that I'd never be running before but all of a sudden now I'm, I'm down the field at lunchtime and I'm, I'm doing a few laps well I'm trying to do a few laps um and then like that I'm not too worried about who I'm sitting beside when I get back to work I'm not like you know what I mean I, I might be <laughs> the freshest for the rest of the day <laughs> until maybe half five or so but like I said just that flexibility I think a lot of people will be uh looking forward to being able to introduce just their daily life now that it's that maybe they didn't have um, that flexibility before or, and it wasn't necessarily uh, an option that was 
I kind of put to you before, but I think going forward, it's just going to be something now that will be uh, part of the deal or part of the package, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. So before we, we finish out, move to the networking session, I, I want to do another quick call out to anyone in the room who has any questions, please feel free. Um, last question, Gillian. you've often yeah. attended some of these um, networking events and yeah. uh, the whole purpose is to inform, to inspire and to network. What do you know now, based on the last 12, 13 months, what advice would you give yourself from 12 months ago? So knowing now what you know after what we've gone through, what advice would you give your older self from 12 months ago? What's been the greatest learning? Yeah, I, obviously the, the change initially was something to adapt to in terms of your, your kind of your new office at home. And I think it's just to really stick to a certain schedule and to keep your focus there throughout the entire day, like keep your keep your your note your whether it's a notepad or your your key points to the day what you have to get through your reminders the whole lot of that like I said you're not drifting off no other sounds are kind of coming in but then again stick to don't overwork yourself as well don't run into your lunchtime if you're if you're having a conversation pick pick yourself up and, and leave your desk as well and make sure you are getting up throughout the day as well because I find I think a lot from last year where I was more I think nearly more paranoid that if someone if someone rang my computer and I wasn't physically sitting at the computer at the time when they rang their phone should they probably think I'm not even doing anything now you know that kind of attitude but um I think it's just it's like I said it's just to make sure that you're actually looking after yourself as well as um making sure that you're kind of getting your bits and pieces done throughout the day is to actually not not to kind of stare into your screen too long to get up and maybe move around a little bit more yeah, because that, that health, wellness, that mind as a muscle is so important as well. And we and, have that freedom to yeah. do it. And keep in touch with it as, as much people as you possibly can in terms of throughout the company. Like I, there was times there where I think I hadn't spoken to some of the other um, teams for months at a time. And I would find myself now, like as in if, if, I'm, if I have a question to ask them, I might I ring them. I obviously ask them the question. But before I ask them the question, I'll have a 10 minute chat with them because like I said, I would have been chatting to them in the office. I would have been catching up with them fine now. Like there'd be people's communions. They'd be looking forward to and all that kind of stuff. But that's the stuff now that I think people are missing out on. So don't be afraid as well just to have, I suppose, a bit of a chat with people as well as sticking to strictly business only. Yeah, and keeping in touch. Well, the comments have started to come through. So Fiona Pepper, one for all awards, is uh, completely agreeing with you and saying so much more active since we've come home. It's great to use that commute time for something different. You know, there's nothing yeah. worse than being on the M50 for nearly an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening, when we now know we can be more pro pro productive yeah. and run through. Um, we knew it happened. The B word has been mentioned, Gillian, you know, and I, we were kind of joking beforehand and said, well, we give a prize to the first person who mentions it, you know, and Fiona Pepper, we've got, if we'd only known, we could have got a one for all for from you. And it would go to Kevin McFeely because Kevin has asked, is there any improvement moving goods as a result of Brexit? I definitely think there has been now um, at the start of the year. And we all talked about it last year and we all basically anticipated the, the backlog that we would have. We all knew the delays that we would be faced with in terms of transits and goods actually reaching the point of delivery that they, they've been requested for. But I've definitely noticed that it's not as um, people aren't necessarily kind of as, as afraid of it in terms of, oh, I have to get this pallet here or I have to get this full load here. It's, 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 it has kind of lined up nearly with itself. There is definitely still delays. There's no doubt about that. And it does take longer. Like you could have, something that would typically have been maybe to the UK day one for day three, collection day one, delivery day three. It might be, depending on if it's a full load or groupage, you see, this is where I think um, the, a lot of the complications have come about. Whereas if you have a full load, if, if you've got, like I said, 24 pallets maybe on a trailer or, or a, a truck that's going over to the UK or coming back into to Ireland, say, the, the driver has full control over that truck. It's, it's, there's no, they, their delays should not be anywhere near as bad as the likes of a groupage load where one or two pallets. So I think it's unfortunate that the, the guys who are, are shipping over smaller loads maybe are, are faced with um, longer routes and longer transits. But it has cleared up definitely in the last uh, even two months, I think, from, from January, because January, like I said, everybody knew it was going to be a bit of a, a show, but it, it, it did, it calmed down and it, and it has, uh, I suppose, ironed itself out a bit. Yeah, it's good. Kevin, I'm going to bring you in, actually, um, if it's OK. Kevin, um, what, um, what's the business and, and are you affected by uh, any transport issues at the moment? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Yeah. 
No, the only reason I say that is because my wife um, works in that business. She works for Ace Express. And, uh, uh, my God, they were in through chaos for weeks, 12 hours a day. Now, her mother got sick and COVID and all this sort of thing. So she actually took three months leave of absence. But she just had to get away from it. She just found her stress levels were going through the wall. Like I said, 12 hours a day. Like she literally had trailers sitting in the yard in the UK for two weeks and it was not moving. And it was all as a result of the UK end was not ready for Brexit. They oh, said yes, that, true. fine, we're going, we're going to leave Europe and everybody else can deal with it. But they didn't realise that they would actually have to do with all, all this because, and they just weren't ready for it. And she just said, like, like she'd have a driver sitting in a truck in a yard going nowhere for days on end. Yeah. So that's why I was just wondering. Like I said, she's been out of it now for since the end of January, and uh, so I just said, I just said, I'd ask the question: Is is it getting any better? Yeah, yeah it, I think a lot of people are still facing the frustrations of it. Like I said, and it's it's frustrating, obviously, for to be in the industry to try and explain to somebody why those delays are happening. Oh yeah, and and, yeah. and, and, and it is as and I, I can imagine that you like as in for those people that were doing the twelve hour days, and I know even from our own our companies, they were saying to me at a time. We have a, a new Brexit management team, basically, that we um, have, have hired and, and trained up. And um, uh, the guys were inundated, basically, with emails. It was constant. There was, you would, they would be talking to the woman and they'll say, listen, I've got about 40 emails there I haven't read that have just come yeah. in the last half an hour kind of thing. So they do definitely had, had a really big task even and still do. But um, in terms of uh, the delays, I'm hoping as the year goes on, we'll, um, we'll yeah, ease off still a little bit. Kevin, thanks a million for the question. Really appreciate it. And thanks oh, for coming on screen as well. Um, you know, just before we leave that subject, we um, are personally, myself, I bought some furniture online and it was coming from Holland and we got a chance to trek it. And normally that would have went land bridge across the UK. They didn't. They yeah. drove to France no. and then onto the ferry and, uh, and up to Rosslare and skipped the UK completely. And we had it from date of order to date of delivery, door to door, five and a half days. It was phenomenal. Yeah, for not, yeah but we, this is bulk, you know. Yeah, we have um our own group, which and just say full load service from uh, from Europe um as well imports and it, to be honest with you, we've a lot of our routes that we would have taken as well now uh, are avoiding the UK completely. And to be honest, it's it's just as as easy I suppose avoiding it at the moment. It's going like it's a lot of our customers would request that we avoid the UK, but we're lucky enough to have that service now ourselves anyway that we do avoid the UK with a lot of our our imports especially. So. Um, yeah. like I said, you're lucky enough that you got your furniture and you have some to sit on. And I suppose the big question, and, and Shane, thank, Shane, thanks for asking the question there. I'm going to bring you in if I can, actually, because Shane actually has asked there something that we're all thinking. How much will these delays, um, like with COVID and the Suez Canal and Brexit, how much does that cost us as consumers? Shane, what's your business? What, what, what do you do? Um, video production. Yeah. Yeah, so telling people stories. And of course, that's one of the questions, of course, people are thinking is, um, how much does that cost get passed on? Isn't that it? Yeah, well, a lot of my equipment would have always come from the UK. And now I have to buy from Germany and places like that. Now, the UK is saying that they'll pay for all the duties, but it's the extra added hassle of that they, they have to refund the duty to me and all this kind of stuff. But I'm mean, just more, the question is more about, um, like, anything come from China, a lot of my equipment would come from China. And if the containers are costing more, it's taking longer. Yeah. That's obviously going to pass down to us. Absolutely, yeah. When you think about anybody that uh, is, is in buying and selling goods in any kind of way, they, you buy, you're buying, just say, for example, Shane, yourself would be a camera. You're buying the camera, but the person that's selling you that camera is also selling you the, the transportation. And I think that's a lot of the time people don't realize as well that it's built in. It's the cost. These costs are actually built into the cost of your equipment. So again, when those costs rise, it, whether the person who's, who's it depends on how, how they're actually shipping, if you're buying it online, say, and they've excluded the shipping costs or whether they're saying it is, it's included. Most of the time you'll find anything to say in store, maybe um, that the, the cost of shipping will be included in the cost of the product. So when the shipping costs rise, the product will naturally rise at the end of the day on the shelf. And yeah. it's ha it, 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 it definitely happens. Like I said, I know I'd mentioned that we, um, did actually purchase product, just say food stuff, and we sell just say to retailers or import buyers. When I'm buying the actual, just say, uh, whatever it be, butter, cheese, whatever it might be, and I'm paying air freight that would have been maybe two euro a kilo, when the air freight due to COVID went up to four euro a kilo, 
it has a, it has a knock on effect on the cost of the product. And obviously, I think that's where the struggle was for a lot of people was that they were trying to keep the cost down for the consumers. But realistically, there was there was no money being made because the, the prices had ridden, risen so much. Yeah. Shane, thank you so much for the question. I uh, really appreciate it. But I'm going to ask everyone in the room uh, to join with me and thank Gillian for joining us this morning. And uh, it's been really enlightening. And there's, there's lots of questions I'm sure people will have. But Gillian, you're amazing. And the way that you have turned things around from a sales point of view and proved to us all that, yes, people buy from people. Word of mouth and the power recommendation still works, but we can embrace the limitations that we have with COVID by using technology and uh, and do a blend and a bit of a hybrid of both and still be successful. Gillian, thank you very much. If you're looking around the room, oh, no. you're getting a big virtual round of applause. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. So Gillian's going to stay with us, but we're going to try something a little bit different this morning. I know my colleague Nevin has, uh, has done this in the past, but Zoom has the ability for you to choose which breakout rooms you want to join. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a traditional one first where we'll open breakout rooms and Zoom will choose who you end up with. But we're going to just do that for nine to ten minutes for the first round, as well as introducing yourself to the people in the room. What I'd like you to do as a task is come up with themes for particular rooms so we can name them. So, for instance, if somebody wants to know about digital marketing, we can put that on a name. And you, if you are a provider as that, um, you can go into that room and answer questions that people can choose to go in and ask you. If it's video production, we can choose a room and call it video production and people can choose to go into that room. And Gillian might actually take a room herself just for a couple of minutes. It'll have Gillian, Gillian Clancy on the top of it, and you can choose to go in there and ask Gillian a few questions. So we'll do it traditionally first, but the, the goal in this is when we come back to throw out a few suggestions of themed rooms, and we'll set those up and then run for the remainder of the session. So let's open up some breakout rooms, and I'm going to put um, six rooms, four participants per room. Introduce yourself to the other three people in the room that you'll have, and when we come back, I'll ask you then to, um, to suggest some themes from some rooms that you could join. So the breakout rooms are now open. We'll give this first round 10 minutes. Off you go. <laughs> 